G'day, Brent Vaughan here from Multi Health Central, and today we're here to talk about the long reach range of power catamarans. I'm joined by Peter Faulkner, who is the first long reach 54 uh, owner with a boat on order, who we're consulting quite closely with on the design. So, Peter, welcome. Uh, Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Um, so, before we get into, I guess, the long reach range, um, maybe it'd be interesting to know your background in terms of what boats you've owned in the past. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm a multi hull person through and through. I've had, uh, I started off with a Sea Wind 1000, and then from then I had a lightweight 38, and then a lightweight 45, and at the moment I've got a racing cat, sailing cat, um, a 30 foot radar, which we race locally in pit water and upon um, prison water. Yeah, right. So, apart from the racing cat, uh, three different uh, sail cruising catamarans. Correct, yeah. Um, <coughs> we've done <coughs> quite a bit of sailing as well. Um, and back in 2006, we went uh, around the world in the lightweight 45 right. uh, sailing. So, full circumnavigation. Yeah, we <coughs> started off um, East Coast, of course, uh, and then uh, went to Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, um, Sri Lanka, uh, up to the Red Sea, through the Indian, across the Indian Ocean, the Red Sea, uh, into the Med. We spent a couple of seasons in the Med, and then uh, across the Atlantic to the Caribbean. We spent a couple of uh, seasons there as well, and then from there we um, went through the Panama and across the Pacific and home. Wow. Just myself and my wife and uh, yeah. Right. How many years in total? Oh, I was about four and a half, five years. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a pretty amazing achievement. Yeah, no, it was, it was uh, a good trip. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, during that time, you must have learned a huge amount uh, of the, the practical realities of living on the on Oh, yeah, sleep. certainly. I think after, you know, living on the boat for say, you know, for four or five years, you really do know what you want in, in, in a vessel. And um, hopefully <coughs> we've managed to put that into the Long Reach 54. Yeah, excellent. So you've had three uh, sailing cruising catamarans, even a racing sailing catamaran, and now you're looking at a, a power catamaran. So why did you come to that position? Okay, well, I've sailed up and down the east coast of Australia numerous times. Um, usually we end up motor sailing or motoring. Um, usually probably you know, five, six knots. The wind is either against you <coughs> or there's no wind or uh, it's too much. And <coughs> you also, the other thing is that we're doing sort of quite long uh, cruises and to get away with not actually having an overnighter um, is, is, to me, is quite good because I don't actually enjoy them very much. Mm. Uh, and in the case of, you know, with, well, if we're going to, um, you know, motor most of the time uh, or motor sail, uh, well, just as well get a motorboat. And, and that's, that's what, um, <clears throat> so it's something that we can go maybe 10, 15 knots cruising speed that will enable us to um, get, well, certainly do say 150 miles a day with our daylight hours, and then we've got to get somewhere, to port or wherever, harbour, and, and stay the, uh, uh, you know, stay the night there in comfort, and then go on again. Um, I, and I think <clears throat> that's sort of the main reason. But I want something at the same time. I want a cruising boat um, that gives me range. And to be honest with you, there um, until we found the Long Reach 54, there isn't very many. Uh, mono, uh, multi holes uh, out there that <coughs> that sort of can give us the distance. Mm. Well, there's obviously oodles of motorboats out there in the world. So why did you end up sort of preferencing the the catamaran again? Well, again, because I mean the fuel economy on the mono holes is you know I mean I don't want to I can't justify you know going 24 knots for one hour and using 600 liters of fuel so uh you know and if we can you know go at say 15 knots and we can use say 25 30 liters you know that's to me is it's it's pretty good um you're not going to get better than that and again 
Māori hau, you've got a, such a you know wide base there. You know, it's seven point five meters wide. Um, it, when you and when we're in the uh, Pacific, for instance, uh, at an anchorage, it's extremely rolly. And it's only the multi holes that really are comfortable. Everybody else, you know, the monos were just going from one side to the other, and it was not at all pleasant. But in a multi in a multi hull with with that, you know, beam, it gives you much more, um, you know, se security as well. You know, it's much easier to walk in the boat. It's yeah. it's just there are just so many advantages. Plus, you've got two of everything as well. So that the old saying of once you go to a cat, you never go back. Definitely, true. definitely. <laughs> I would definitely not go back. There's just so many advantages. I mean, the other thing is, you know, what do we draw? We're going to draw 1.1 meter. We're going to be able to, uh, going really close in, we can actually beach on the sand, you know. Um, and we've designed it in such a way that the propeller and all the steering gear is protected. So, I mean, that's really important, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Now, this is, I think, what is really important with uh, what we're doing with Peter is we're, we're I guess, using a lot of your experience and, and knowledge to uh, combine that with a pretty experienced or very experienced boat builder. Um, so what are the key, I guess, features that, that are important to you? You mentioned beachability. Um, what about things such as uh, power supply and... Yeah, okay. Well, the, the other thing when you learn, <coughs> when we were cruising um, in our sailing cap, one of the things I learned was solar. And well, there's two things actually ventilation and solar. Well, in the case of ventilation, most of the time you're an anchor. Um, you, uh, unless, I mean, very seldom we were going to marinas. And so you're an anchor, and if you've got <coughs> the wind, you know, is always blowing through the boat, and the more ventilation you've got on that boat, you don't need to have the air conditioning, or you don't need the air con. Um, well, and this is a really good point, right? So, and, and what are they doing like, with this right. window designed for yeah, this purpose? Yeah, well, so we, so, well, I've made certain that we've got, we've got lots and lots of hatches everywhere and, mm. and we've got that through ventilation, um, you know. So, and that, that's the first thing. And then on, in the case of um, uh, power, uh, solar is number one. I want to sit, uh, be at an anchor for maybe one, two, three, four days. And I don't want to turn the engine on for an hour or two hours every day. And we're going to have two kilowatts of uh, solar on board. We've got a huge lithium battery bank. And unless there's no sun for a long period of time, I can see us basically not having to turn the generator on at all. You know, which, you know, really, you know, which is great. You know, that's how it should be. So it's taking the reliance off that generator and totally. burning fuel, essentially. Exactly. Yeah. You know, doing our bit for the <laughs> for the uh, for the world. Yeah. yeah. Well, it really comes back to efficiency, I guess. Well, it, it is. Yeah. And and also, I would hate that, you know having the engine on, you know, going away and when really, you know, with solar, there's just there's no need as long as you've got enough of it, which we're going to have heaps on that on that uh, flybridge roof. So. Mm. Solar aside, let's talk about efficiency. Um, so the engine package, um, tell us about the... Yeah, well, um, we're looking at putting uh, uh, 400 horsepower Yamaha's uh, engines in. Um, so what we're, we're gonna get some very really good fuel uh, economy, which is you know, pretty important. Um, and so we're looking at a range I mean, I think, you know, when, if we're doing, say, 15 knots, we should be getting a range of 1,800 miles, mm, and incredible. which is which is good. And then I think, okay, let's take a bit of time, and we're only going to go at 10 knots. We're talking three, three and a half, four thousand 4,000 uh, miles, mm. nautical miles. Mm. That's a huge range. Yeah. You know? And that's made possible because of the displacement style hull. E exactly. The displacement uh, style hull, yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And so obviously the engines also provide um, power generation through the alternators yeah. charging the lithium batteries. That's right. So we, we've got um, bigger size uh, alternators in there, so that'll give us a uh, heap more uh, uh, charging ability. Yeah. What about accessories on the boat? What is this power ultimately going to be running? So the galley is pretty uh, uh, special. We've got a big, big uh, stand-up yeah, well, fridge, which will be uh, a new experience for you at sea, I take it? Well, yeah, well, as I said, when we were 
when we were cruising, the most, the biggest power drain was fridges. Um, and we actually then ran, uh, we had two fridges and a freezer. And I mean, some of them were, you know, often they were pulling five amps uh, an hour and each. And the other thing is the, you know, when the cabin is locked up, you're going offshore, you're going ashore or something for a period of time and you lock the cabin up, you, <coughs> 50 degrees in that cabin it could be. And so the fridges will work in overtime. And to be honest, they were marine fridges, so-called marine fridges, and they were rubbish, completely rubbish. They didn't work at all well. You know, you had, it was either incredibly hot at one at the top and cold at the bottom, you know, or vice versa. And it was just, but now <coughs> the idea is to put a conventional um, uh, domestic fridge freezer in, uh, 900 wide with ice maker. Um, and we believe that the, the amount of power it's going to take is not going to be any more than, than a, a marine fridge as such mm -hmm. and uh, and it's so good having some <laughs> a full size fridge freezer mm. well, certainly my wife thinks so <laughs> and it looks like there's also room for a dishwasher if you yeah oh yeah, that's right we have, you know we'll have all those luxuries which we didn't have before yeah. dishwashers and things and actually even talking about putting steam up and then so uh, yeah right. <laughs> right but in essence it's really trying to provide that apartment living uh, exactly yeah uh, I guess luxury yeah. and uh, yeah. what you're more yeah. accustomed to, I guess, uh, That's right. on the land. So, yeah. Um, yeah. why don't we talk? Uh, well, while we're on accessories, any other additional accessories that you'd be having on the boat that are, are power drawing appliances? Mm. You're not looking at dive compressors and those sort of things, I take it. Mm, no, um, there's sort of an option there at the moment. I had one on the last boat, but I, um, I, whether I put one on this time, I don't know. Mm. Uh, at the moment, no, um, but definitely water maker, of course, because yes. uh, you know that's w without saying. Um, so we'll, we'll have a we're, we're going to have a reasonably big water maker on scene, at, at least you know probably 150 liters an hour. Yeah. Um, again, that was you know when you're cruising, there's certain things that are always going wrong, and there's fridges, water makers, <laughs> and all those things. So that's what you've got to make sure you get them right. You know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the layout of the boat uh, looks pretty special in terms of giving a, a nice yeah. space for the master cabin and so on. One of the great, I mean, looking around the other uh, multi-hull um, power cats, there's a couple that come up with the, with the forward cabin, um, master cabin, which basically means the whole front of the, the, of the boat is the master cabin, which is, you know, it looks really nice and it feels great. It's basically, well, it's two steps down um, from your saloon area. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, you know, um, that layout, I do like that layout. And then we then end up with having a sort of a, a VIP um, guest suite uh, on one hull. Uh, which has his own uh, bathroom and then on the other side we're going to have a uh, uh, one <coughs> a twin twin bed uh, cabin with uh, with it with a uh, bathroom attached but that will also act as a day head as well yeah okay yeah right. so uh, yeah I'm, I'm we're going a bit over on the on the bathrooms <laughs> but, yeah. but there again when you've been there's nothing better on, <clears throat> when you're cruising and you've got guests on board you've got your own uh facilities and they have as well so yeah. you know absolutely and the the i mean the saloon looks very comfortable big galley uh and then out in the the cockpit is seems to be a huge amount of shade um yeah for living out living in australia you've got to have shade and mm -hmm. uh so the the aft cockpit will, will be fully covered and then we can put clears to to uh <coughs> cover that in which again is usually quite pretty important especially if it starts raining in the tropics you know we can just you know tie everything down mm -hmm. uh and then on the flybridge again we're going to have a big area up there uh, which will also be enclosed with clears but the front section will actually the helm station will have glass uh windows at the front yeah. um protection with forward access with foot now and of course with forward access which is really important that from from that position of the helm station you can go forward really quickly or you can go aft really quickly if you're on your own or you know even if not it's just two of you or something and you need help or something yeah. you can do it fast yeah 
So we've talked a little bit about the efficiency of the boat, but we haven't really talked about the context, uh, apart from going at east coast, uh, up and down the coast, where do you plan to take this boat? Well, I, I still haven't done the Kimberleys and I'd like to get to New Guinea as well. So uh, the Lusiad, so <clears throat> they're definitely the first two on the, on the uh, line, but the boats can be made in, uh, in um, Thailand. So uh, I will bring it back. Um, we'll bring it back uh, from Thailand uh, and whether we spend maybe one or you know, two years uh, in Thailand and Indonesia cruising or whether we come straight back, it will really, I suppose, depend on what happens with COVID. Mm, yeah. Of course, yeah. And the, the range, obviously, we've you know, we talked about the, the range, the fuel uh, tankage on the boat is considerable, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. So it's about 6,000 uh, litres. So. 6,000 nearly. And, and of course, taking delivery in, in somewhere like Thailand and exploring Southeast Asia, yeah. uh, you're looking at a, a fuel polishing system? Definitely, yeah, because uh, the, the state of the, of the uh, fuel over there, especially Indonesia, is could be a bit ordinary. So yeah, yeah we're definitely going to have that in uh, as a safety method, yeah. 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 So really, in essence, it's it's giving you a, a cruising platform, much like you, I guess, used to on the sailing cats, but the convenience of power Exactly. Efficiency. Exactly. Yeah. And and you know again, you know we're going to be able to. Well, certainly, I'm mean, going up the east coast. We're not going to have to do an overnighter at all. Mm. You know, so which is which is great. Mm. You know, uh, and and likewise, well, certainly in Indonesia, we're you know, unlikely. And if, and if we have to, you know, we've got the, you know, all the facilities there to do it. Yeah. But um, but the the other thing is, you do need that fuel range because you say, oh well, if you're not doing an overnighter, you can fuel up again. But you can't because there's so, especially when you start going into Indonesia and well, the Kimberleys, you're not going <laughs> find anywhere to fuel up so yeah. you've got to you know have that uh, amount of fuel on board spot on and yeah. I think largely uh, that's why a lot of people end up on sailing uh, cats because the the range just hasn't exactly. been, been available on that sort of yeah. platform you, you, that, exactly right yeah, yeah. 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 So people are forced to uh, learn how to sail which which isn't all all bad of course yeah. uh, we love we love sailing uh, as you do but yeah. uh, not everyone is uh, interested in doing that so. no no, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you talked about picking the boat up in Thailand. Yeah. Uh, so that's from uh, the builders. Correct. Power play. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, what's your experience been uh, so far with? Oh, yeah, with great. China? No, we've um, <coughs> been talking to, uh, yeah, to the builder in Thailand and then also with his architect who's actually based on the Gold Coast. Uh, Tim and you know the fantastic you know they're really you know we're going through the whole boat we're you know and with their knowledge uh, you know and I suppose my cruising experience it sort of uh, I think we're getting we're going to get a really good boat. Mm, mm. So uh, James Dewing and Power Play Catamarans and he's been around twenty odd years building exactly. power cats yeah. and yeah so I mean he's got the experience. Um, and you know he's got the experience of, of building these things, and he's been building just power cats. Mm. So, you know, there's lots of people out there who've been building a lot of multi hulls, but most of them are sailing ones. Mm. And so he's just specialises in, in in power cats. And you know, with this new design, uh, and uh, you know, and with the marina architect in uh, in Gold Coast, I think we, we're going to come up with something pretty good. Mm. And it's worth pointing out that the naval architecture is being um, conformed to uh, Lloyd standards, yeah. Yeah. and uh, and on the smaller one, the the Australian AMSA yeah. standards for yeah. commercial use. But I think that that's another yeah. uh, value add beyond the standard yeah. CE um, standards that a lot of the catamarans are built to. But this is going to be a higher level again. Yeah. Definitely. And all, I mean, just everything. I mean, Tim was saying that the, uh, you know, all the staircases have to be a certain, certain width so that we can put it into charter or if not that I'm going to, but, but, you know, the boats to follow can be easily put into charter without any problems. Mm. You know? I think that's a, an interesting point that all the boats be built to a commercial yeah. grade. Uh, so if you did want to charter it at some point, yeah. uh, the boat is at least built to that exactly. uh, build level. Yeah. So, and I, I think, for us, that gives us a lot of comfort because there's such a high level of scrutiny 
yeah. uh, that goes through the, the build process to yeah. do that. Now, you know, something we've had a lot of experience with in Australia, yeah. building the commercial vessels for the charter industry. Yeah. You just see it. I mean, there's so many hoops to jump through. And, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. You know, so I think that's uh, that's a nice value add. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what's the timing? Uh, well, we're hoping um, for it to be completed by uh, May next year. Next but year. Uh, as I said, it's <laughs> COVID is the, is the, could be the problem there. But uh, yeah. yeah. And hopefully we'll see you uh, on, the, on the 54 back in Australia. That's right. Not too far after? <laughs> well, that's right. Well, that's it. I was actually even looking today, I working out, I said, well, Singapore, been talking about opening up in Singapore with, uh, the, with Australia, and I thought, oh, we can get the back to Singapore, and then I can get Singapore straight to Darwin. So that's 1,800 miles. So there we are. See, there's a 1,800 miles. I'm going to be able to do that in one hit without mm. stopping. Yeah. Um, you know, so situation, you know, that I can't go into Indonesia, I, I can come straight to Darwin, yeah. you know, Excellent. in one go. Yeah. You know, and and the cost is you know a lot cheaper than putting on a ship. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And you have to see a pretty we, interesting part of the world. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, thanks very much, Peter. I mean, we, we're really uh, uh, enjoying working with you really closely to, I guess, bring what we hope is a really genuinely good cruising uh, power catamaran, which yeah. I think has been a long, long time coming. Yeah. And uh, it's great to have someone like you on board to. Uh, really nut out the detail of that. Yeah. Um, so we, we look forward to following the, the progress through the build and the design and, and ultimately your travels in yeah. the future. So uh, hopefully we can do a few more catch ups like this and uh, certainly and, uh, and follow your progress. Yeah. Okay. Thank Excellent. You. All right. Thanks very much. Thanks. So for further information on the Long Reach 54 or to follow Peter's progress with the new design, click here. Click here for further videos.